Okay, now we're going to move over to a tall fence and practice releases. Using a ball against the fence instead of the discus in the circle allows us to have a lot of throws with immediate feedback. Uh, I would recommend using chalk to mark the center of the circle. Maybe even draw an entire circle for everyone. You could go all the way down the fence. So here we're in the power position. The discus, the ball, is behind the right heel. Drive the right hip forward, open the left arm long, left arm and right work together. The right knee, the hip, the foot. The chest starts facing at 12 o'clock. I want him to f start with his chest toward 12 o'clock toward me. He's not leaning over enough, but uh, I didn't want to in put that into the drill yet. Okay, I want right now I want him to feel as he drives that right hip forward, how it stretches and pulls on the discus and brings it around the whole right torso. So I hold his arm steady as he turns. And you can really feel it. Okay, I want him to aim higher in the fence. He's not used to holding the ball. He's holding the ball with his hand, his palm facing downward. The palm should face toward the fence. So here we're going to repeat the power position to the release. We're going to do this over and over. Just back and forth, back and forth. Power position to release. Power position to release. Feel the drive. Watch the right heel turn. The right hip. Long left arm. The angle. Bent right leg. We're in this, what's called the uh, saddle or the cowboy position. With the, uh, both the weight evenly distributed between the legs. The knees were bent out. That's in your power position. Right there. See, we're squatted down, but then we're leaned over to the right. Now I want to correct his heel toe alignment too. His feet are parallel, the clue too close together. We need to get the left foot behind his right foot a little bit. We want to be able to get the feet about hip width apart. Right now, I'm demonstrating how they're crossed in front of him in a straight line, towing the line, and now they're spaced apart. That way his, chips can, his uh, hips can open to the front. Here I want to get his chest open to 12 o'clock. Get most of the weight on the right leg. Get the chest over and lean. You should be able to pick the left foot up in the air and be balanced. Here I'm demonstrating for him. He's falling because he's not quite over far enough. His left arm should be forward. That probably would help him there if he just moved it. That's not a natural position, so. His right leg is bent. His right hip is on top of the right foot. Here I want to teach him to be long with the left arm and then short into a block. The block stops with the elbow right there at the shoulder. It doesn't go back behind the back. Come around, bend, stop right there. The left elbow stops 
and then the body goes forward. Long left arm, shorten it, and then move forward. Don't let the left shoulder go back behind. See, everything moves forward. He's right here, he's pulling it back behind him. He's got, yes, yeah, stop it there. Too far behind. Stop and then move forward. Now I'm trying to show him to keep the right knee low and bent. Don't extend it. Keeping the right knee bent keeps the angle upward. Once you extend it, you also stop rotating to the front around the left side. So you keep the right leg bent so it can rotate around the block, left side block. We extend the left leg into the throw and release. The right keeps turning bent around. The left arm stops and blocks. Everything moves forward, not backwards. Driving the right hip past the left hip. And keep driving the right side past and around the left side. Right hip past the left hip. Here we just let him uh, feel it on his own, get the hang of it, give a little demonstration when needed, a little, a little more uh, coaching. You have to watch and see what they're missing. He's, he's not thinking about the right hip driving forward. I don't want him to lean back and then lean back again. He's leaning then leaning back again. Everything rotates. Now we're gonna try to put it together again, see how he does. Start to finish. Here the heel toe uh, alignment is off again. His left foot is too far in front and he has to pull it back behind him. So I'm pointing out the left foot has to be behind, not parallel. To do that, he's got to rotate on the foot as the left foot goes around. The left foot landed, to, yeah, he, he saw it, so that's good. He's able to coach himself at that point. He saw where it landed. He tried to fix it. The, bi the best fix for that when you don't when they don't land the left foot correctly is to watch the right foot rotate on the toe. You see how he didn't rotate? The heel drops flat, the flat foot. That'll stop the rotation. On the toe, yeah. At this point, I like to do something called throwing around the clock. 
what we're going to do is throw along the javelin runway. He's going to throw right down to 9 o'clock. This, this will teach him some speed. I'm a little off balance there because you can see when my right foot landed, it didn't rotate because it's I'm on basically cement here, this uh, runway and my uh, non-throwing shoes. So you can watch for that too. The type of conditions you're on or surfaces. So as the coach, you stand and you have them throw towards you. It's much easier to throw to nine o'clock than it is to six o'clock. Then I move down a little bit to about 8 o'clock. And they try the drill again. When they can throw towards you, maybe once, maybe twice, then you can move down the clock again and finish the throw towards you. Uh, about 7.30. Give him about uh, 30 minutes there. <laughs> okay, now we're down about 7 o'clock. It's got to start at the same point each time. So in this case, we're not in the circle, so... He's using that ball as a center point between his feet. You can see he's getting his confidence up. He's throwing harder. You gotta be careful. Sometimes the uh, athletes, they do this many uh, turns, uh, they're gonna get dizzy. I found that if you actually stand there and turn the other direction, You'll uh, get yourself undizzied. Actually works. I just give him a little bit more. He says, "We're almost back. I'm almost standing at six o'clock now." There he, he uh, missed the target. Probably getting dizzy. Getting tired. So in that case, I go back. Wherever he was throwing at, and that's where now I'm going to stand. He hits it. Okay. I, I, I don't try to fight it. If, if he, uh, I just moved to where he was throwing. Now I just move a little bit more toward the 6 o'clock. Good. And then he hits it. And now we're fully at 6 o'clock. Now we're going to try what I call South African repeats. We're just going back and forth, doing some short South Africans, getting used to the footwork, getting used to jumping in. Everything we learned, staying on top of that right foot and turning. Landing with, on top of the right foot, on top of the right, uh, the hip on top of the right foot, so you can rotate. Try to prevent, see right here, I'm showing them, if you should be able to bounce and, and uh, emphasize keeping that hip on top of the foot so you don't shift too far forward land on top and get the left foot down top and left foot down we're just landing in the power position so I want him to learn to finish with the chest toward 12 you see the chest wants to <laughs> wants to open up too soon So now I'm going to try a sweep leg working together with the left arm. Remember, they're connected. So as the left arm goes forward, the sweep leg comes out, the right leg. It's the left arm, right leg connection. We'll just do some repeats there.
see how using that long left arm, it's, it really smooths out the throw. Here's the repeats, the left arm, right leg, and then into a South African. I'm going to show him the drill again because he hasn't really done it yet. There we go. Give him his time and space to learn it and feel it on his own. Then when he's ready, he finishes it. Still landing in with a really bent left leg and uh, not quite extending it. Now he's going to try to put it all together. So in about 30 minutes, he's, he's pretty much... It's not perfect, but he's learned how to uh, pretty much go around the circle. Then, uh, I mean, this would be basically the first day of practice. And as you go along and uh, keep repeating these and maybe breaking it down to smaller and smaller drills, uh, the athlete will get it and it'll become more proficient. Okay, let's look at some uh, Olympians. <laughs> 